Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM19 story, The Head Coach with me, Daniel. It's season 12, episode 1, and as you can see, we start a brand new season unemployed, looking for a big elite job to take us to one of Europe's super clubs. We're aiming for a club in either La Liga Serie A or over in the Bundesliga in Germany, trying to make sure we can win more domestic titles, as well as potentially the big one in Europe. So the reason we're unemployed is because we've had a pretty eventful summer so far. We obviously said with Newcastle if we couldn't get a job we would just resign to make sure we got the move we needed. We've had interviews at so many clubs, we've been offered our third job of the summer now and this is the one we're going to accept which is the reason we've come back today. You can see the list of available jobs on the left so it's going to be one of the two big ones from there. Unfortunately it's probably not the one you'd have hoped but it is still a very big club. So if we quickly run through the summer we had an almost immediate job interview with Roma who finished in the Europa League places in Serie A last year. Unfortunately, although they offered us the job, it was a massive pay cut and they had a pre-agreed transfer with two or three of their big names to move on. So unfortunately, they weren't a club for us. In the meantime, we had interviews at RB Leipzig. They were the champions of the Bundesliga last year, but unfortunately, they went for Zinedine Zidane. So we weren't able to get that job either. We've had interviews at Barcelona where we were ejected. Real Madrid, which is available at the moment, but unfortunately, it doesn't look like we're going to get that. And we did have an interview with the Italian Italian champions Juventus but unfortunately they opted for another manager instead. So you can see from the process of elimination exactly which club we've been offered a job by today. We have delayed it one week already so we are going to need to accept it. We were just waiting to see if we got the Juventus job but unfortunately it wasn't to be. So we are going to be moving to Napoli on a two year deal. They finished second in Serie A last year. They've got a really decent side and I think we're going to be able to take them to the top of Italian football. The only promise we agreed in the interview is that we'd keep their director of football there we'll go and meet him when we join the club but we're just going to negotiate this up a grand or two if we can we'll go to 48,000 first they're not really budging at all so 47 and a half and they're happy to accept that so it's a bit of a pay cut from Newcastle but we've done all we can there and with the amount of money we're earning at the moment it's not really a factor in any club we join so we're going to finalize that deal and join Napoli in a moment and we'll be back to introduce our new club and meet our new team and staff here we are then, confirmation after four and a half years at Newcastle, we've finally got a big new job. We're moving to Napoli in Syria. We've taken charge with brilliant career stats and hopefully we'll be able to add to our trophy hall here and really do a brilliant job in Italy. Our first move outside of the UK as our only other job outside of England was at Dungan and Swifts in year one. Obviously our career started with an awful sacking which seems to get mentioned in every news headline but let's go and introduce ourselves to Napoli and try and meet the squad we've currently got. There is one slight warning I've got to give. We're in a little bit of a strange situation with this club. If we go to their transfer screen now, they've got a few players that they're trying to get in. I'm deliberately hiding that screen because it does contain one familiar name, which I don't want to spoil too early. But they don't actually have any transfer budget remaining, as they're in a bit of a financial mess. However, they have a million pound a week on the wage bill and the reason I was attracted to join despite that is the director of football is already negotiating for three loan players to join at once and they all look to be of pretty good quality so if you can get in five or six big loan players for that wage budget available it won't really matter that we haven't got a transfer budget but if we go back to our inbox we'll get the welcome to Napoli we'll go and do those meetings in a moment there is a rule in the Italian league regarding non-EU transfers and as we stand in this game England are included in that as they're no longer in the European Union so in essence a maximum of one new non-EU player unless we get rid of one of the ones already in the squad we've got an injury update which shows that we've got a few players with recurring injuries a couple of them are first team players so we'll have to be careful of that we've got three players who are currently unhappy one key player one first teamer and what must be a very old Anthony Martial who's now just a rotational option here so we'll go and talk to them in a minute as well but let's just go and meet the squad and the staff behind the scenes and then we'll come back in the next episode at the end of the transfer window to show you our tactic for the new season and play our first game with Napoli so let's go to the staff screen first I know you're all itching to meet the players but the staff are arguably more important as with a good director of football and head of youth development we can take any club to the top so if we show all staff and just get them in order one of the negatives is our assistant manager did leave as did a few of the coaches with the old manager although we have got Thiago Motta a legend from Barcelona he played for PSG as well and into Milan when they won the Champions League he looks a very good coach but we don't want to be relying solely on him we need a few more people coming into the club 
But let's meet the two big men that are here. Javier Rebolta is our director of football. A Spaniard on over five grand a week. And just look at his stats. His attributes are perfect for judging ability and potential. And he's got pretty much everything else you'd want as well. A determined personality. He's been a scout at Juve and Manchester United. And a director of football at Zenit for 10 years. And now he's over in Napoli. I can see why they're trying to sign such good players. I'm hoping he'll be able to work wonders in the loan window. Unlike England, there's no restrictions at all whether it be domestic or overseas loans. Of course, in England, you can get as many overseas ones as you want in the top tier. You just can't have many domestic ones. But no restrictions here on that. As long as they're from within the EU, it should be easy for Javier Ribalta. We're looking forward to working with him. And the head of youth development is an Italian, Gianluca Grava. He's on 4.4 grand a week, and he looks pretty special as well. The personality's perhaps not ideal for young players coming in, but really good at judging ability and potential. And and plenty of good attributes, as well as being a very good coach. Exactly what we'd expect from the Italian, and we're delighted to be working with him as well. I was just seeing if there were any other big names we recognised here, but unfortunately there weren't. Only Motta at the moment, so we'll leave the staff screen at that. I suppose we should probably just check who the chief scout is as well. It doesn't look like we've got one of them either at the moment. We haven't, so that's going to be another recruitment job for our director of football. Hopefully he finds the right candidate for that role. But let's go and have a look at our squad. The last and most important part of this episode we have got a little bit of a big squad at the moment but you can see loads of them are young players that have been promoted with not much ability at all so let's go and get rid of all of the one and a half star players just put them in the under 20s for now we'll go and sort those out in a moment we just want to review our first team squad as always, when joining a club, I do want to go and have a look in the youth teams just to spot players like that with two and a half star ability who we can move up to the first team squad and really give an opportunity to next year. But if we go back to the first team and look at what we've got now, I can immediately notice a couple of problems. We haven't got any natural strikers at the club or any fullbacks at all. And I really should have done my research on this one as that doesn't look particularly good. Through the middle of the team, we do have some fantastic players, but I'm not sure they're going to cut it without any wide men. We can't play a narrow formation across the pitch, and the fact we've only got three defenders that are all centre-halves is a little bit of a concern. One of them's a 35-year-old John Stones, who I can see is on the transfer list, and of course he's a non-EU player as well. He's surely lost most of his pace by now. His pace is 8, his acceleration 7, but aside from that, he still looks pretty good. Maybe we'll find a role for him next year. But let's go through the positions where we have got key players and look at those who might be stars for us next year. We've got Vinicius Leonardo, a goalkeeper, three and a half star ability, a sweeper keeper too, a Brazilian international with four star potential. He looks like he's going to be an absolute superstar. Played over 200 games for Napoli already. We're really excited to work with him. In defence, we've got two first teamers that'll probably play ahead of Stones. Diogo Leite is a 30-year-old, three-and-a-half star ability centre-half. A Portuguese international who can also play left-back, so that might be where he has to be used if our director of football doesn't get someone in that position. He's very well paid and he's worth £50 million, but over 100 caps for Portugal, he certainly looks like a superstar. The other young centre-half is Sapa Pap, I think that is. Let me know if I've pronounced it wrong, but he's a 19-year-old Hungarian centre-half labelled as a wonder kid, although he is left-footed as well. And just look at him across the board. He's going to be one of the best centre-halves in the world. 17 caps for Hungary already, and that's got to be the first world-class player they've produced in a while. They had the brilliant Gabor Kirai, but I think this kid might be a little bit better. So as we've now seen all three defenders at the club, let's move on to midfield where there's absolutely loads of stars. They've got their current captain, Diego Saavedra. I think that's how it's pronounced again. A Chilean 26-year-old, been at Napoli for some time, and he looks really class across the board, and he's got a professional personality too. He plays in a holding role, so he might have to go for a Newcastle-style formation, or maybe even go to a 4-3-3, although we haven't really got a striker at the moment, so we've got a lot of thinking to do there. Next is Alessandro Cortinova. A 28-year-old central midfielder can also play an attacking midfield or on the right wing. He's an Italian international with three and a half star ability and again looks a pretty solid player across the board. We've got Tangoi Dombele, a 
four-star central midfielder at 32 years of age. He's one of the players that wants to return to France, so I'm not sure we're going to be able to keep him here. He's a world-class midfielder, but he's starting to decline, so it might be time to cash in on him if our director of football gets an offer. He's been a brilliant servant for the club with 295 appearances, so surely we can't begrudge him moving on, even though we'll never get to manage him. The other unhappy player is Thiago Gaucho. He's a 26-year-old central midfielder, a four-star Brazilian, a first-team international, and he looks absolutely top class, and he's got it all as a box-to-box -box midfielder too. He's going to be a star man next year. Hopefully, he won't be sold by Rebolta. We've got a couple of younger prospects that aren't quite as good. In attacking midfield, we've got two more three-and-a-half-star players. Lucas, a shadow striker. He doesn't look particularly good to me, actually. I'm a little bit surprised he's marked as having that much ability, as aside from determination and physical attributes, I don't think he's anything special. The other one is Dusan Vigjevic, a 25-year-old Serbian, again three-and-a-half-star ability, a good attacking midfielder, but again isn't particularly wowing me at the moment. And then into the wide areas, we've got two top quality left-sided midfielders, so hopefully one of them will be able to play on the right. Ismail Sar is a real-life player, a brilliant youngster at Wren at the moment. He's 31 years of age now, still got plenty of pace and strength though, and he looks a really solid player across the board, cutting in from that left wing as an inside forward. And then lastly is Diogo Brass. He's another inside forward on the left, but he is a natural right winger as well. Four-star ability, four-star potential, a Portuguese international, and an elite level winger who will surely be a key player for us. The only other one left is Anthony Martial. He does want to leave but he's still a natural striker so he could yet be a key player for us even though he's not quite what he used to be. So there's all the key players in the squad. You can see there's a couple of fairly high potential youngsters in there too so hopefully they'll be able to do well but there's a lot of gaps to fill for our director of football and without a transfer budget and just loads of wage budget remaining he's gonna have to be busy in the loan market. So I hope he'll be able to do that. If we go and have a look at the dynamics of the squad, everything's pretty good at the moment. We've got such a good reputation and our managerial support's high. The dressing room atmosphere's very good already and the team cohesion's good, even though we haven't chosen our tactic for the year yet. That will depend on whether we get some fullbacks or not and a striker as well. At the moment, we haven't got any first team options in those positions, so we're going to have to be a little bit creative as it stands. And finally, before we finish off, let's go and have a look firstly at the finances screen nearly 60 million pound in debt but we haven't come back for pre-season training yet the league in Italy doesn't start till late August so it's a little bit later on than England and hopefully as we sell some season tickets and get some TV revenue we'll be able to move a bit closer to the black Obviously, we may well end up having a transfer budget to spend. We get 35% of revenue from sole players, and there's a couple of big names who want to leave who are still worth 30 or 40 million pounds. So if our director of football sells them, he may be able to get in a couple of young stars, but we don't know what's going to happen yet. We're best just to skip through pre-season and to wait for the first game of our Serie A campaign. And then last but not least, the board expectations. Let's have a look at what they're expecting. In Serie A, they want us to qualify for the Champions League. That means a top three finish in Italy at the moment, as they're the fourth ranked league in the continent. In the Italian Cup, I presume we'll be expected to get to the final. Only the semi-final, that's not too bad, considering we're predicted to have the second best side in the country. And in the Champions League, we've got to reach the group stage. They're not even expecting to get to the last 16. That's something I'll be hoping to do, as long as we have a balanced squad in a month's time. So let's go and look on the schedule to see when our first game of the season is. It's a month and one day in the future. Our home to Kievo, who we're also playing a pre-season friendly against. That's a little bit of a peculiar one. We've got one player who's suspended. That's one of our young right-wingers. He didn't look like a first-team star anyway. So we'll be back in the next episode for a review of the transfer window. Will we fall in love with our new director of football immediately? And will we be able to win our first game of the season? On paper, it looks like a relatively comfortable one. Let's go and have a look at where Kievo finished last year. They were 13th, so it should be a comfortable home win. But that's, of course, easier said than done. So I do hope you'll come and join me again for that one. And for those of you that were hoping we would leave Newcastle and have been asking for it for some time, I'm as delighted of you that we've finally got the recognition from abroad and that we're now able to manage in another of Europe's big leagues. I'll finish on the club's home screen so you can see how they've been getting on. They've obviously been up near the top of the league for a few years. They had one blip two seasons ago where they finished fifth, but last year they were runners-up and they're in a good position. And hopefully we can do well in Europe and domestically. They've got a 70,000 seat 
stadium, really good facilities across the board, superb training facilities, excellent youth facilities and a really established youth recruitment too. So all the signs are positive, I'm really looking forward to managing this club and I hope you'll be looking forward to it too and enjoy our first game in the next episode. But if you did enjoy this one and the introduction to Napoli and the fact that we've managed to get a move as well, please do put a thumbs up on the video, let me know down in the comments what you think of the club and the players that you've met so far. I'm a little bit worried by the lack of balance but I trust our director of football to fix it. He's got a million pound in wages to spend in the loan market and there's plenty of good players available judging by the three he's going for at the moment. Subscribe to the channel for daily FM19 content from two long term stories. This one the head coach with our new club and our one club series part of the furniture with Torquay United. Season 13 of that one starts tomorrow so come along for another transfer special and plenty of big off the pitch news in that series. There's also three episodes a week from my Cricket 19 series every Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday at the earlier time of midday and then we've got weekly content from my Snooker 19 career that's every Friday at 4.30. But a massive thanks for watching and your continued support with the series. I really do appreciate it and I hope to see you next time for our first game at our new club as well as reviewing our director of football's first transfer window.